It's right up my street, it's my boulevard, it's right up my straza, oh my god, it's garden right up there, oh, it's right up my podcast. Ooh. Welcome to Right Up My Podcast. My name is Gwen Watson. And my name is Kate White. And this is the podcast in which we talk to scintillating people about the really clever ideas that they have to make us feel good. And in this episode, episode 19, we are talking to Rebecca Hartnell, who is a coach and mentor. And we're talking to her all about how to embrace failure in our lives, something that we have plenty of experience of. <laughs> <laughs> something which we do every single day. <laughs> On a daily basis. <laughs> and we're learning to love. <laughs> um, but meanwhile, how about a little bit of Wiffle Waffle? How are you doing, Gwen? I'm all right, thanks. Good. Um, you're looking at me a little bit differently today, and I know why that is. I received a photo, dear listener, from Gwen that, unless yep. I'm very much mistaken, was a picture of a very beautiful Christmas tree in the corner of her front room. <laughs> Gwen, is this an, is this in my imagination? Have you put your Christmas tree up, or was I hallucinating then? <laughs> You would be forgiven for thinking you're hallucinating because let me just point out to the dear listener, I don't know what date you're listening on, but um, this photo was sent on the 14th of November. Wow, that is some serious Christmas enthusiasm. I, I need to understand let, I, here. What is going on? Why have you got your Christmas tree up when? Because let me, let me just reassure you that I am a mid-December kind of gal yeah. and I generally get furious at Christmas being shoved down our throats from October. Don't, I mean, obviously I've been buying into buying pots of Twiglets, but other mm. than that, leave Christmas until December, guys. Come on! Where it belongs. Um, where it belongs, yeah. But this year, I was like, do you know what? Fuck it. I want a little bit of Christmas spangle. I want the lights out. I want the decorations. I want to feel the joy. Well, why not? You know what? Also, I reckon if you're going to do it, if you're going to go early, then go, then just properly throw yourself into it. No kind of like <laughs> go half-hearted. Hard. Go hard. No half-hearted kind of hint at Christmas. Just full lights, <laughs> decorations outside of the house. I want an inflatable Santa on your roof. I want the sparkly <laughs> reindeer in the front lawn. <laughs> Well, do you know what? I think I think actually the rest of it may be a bit of a gradual process. I went and got my my Christmas tree and decorations from my dad's house from where it gets stored. <laughs> and um and I had a friend round for dinner and it's such a g awkward tree to get up. So I um so I got my friend because he was round. I was like, can you help me put this tree up? This is a great opportunity. So we put it up. I'm testing it out with the cat who absolutely thinks that it's just a new toy for her. So I've of not course. put any decorations or lights <laughs> on yet. Um, but I did go to bed and I was like, hang on a minute. Let me check the date. Oh, my God. It is only the 14th of November. And I was like, oh, my God, what if I've ruined it for myself? Because I, I feel really sad taking down the decorations because I, I feel I it just makes everything so so much brighter and joyful, I doesn't know. it? No, And now as it's getting darker and it's beginning to get darker earlier at night, I get why we bring all these sparkly lights in and so on, because it's so dark that we just need it, don't we? We yeah. need that little pop. And yeah, everything is so bland when you take it down in January. But, you know, yes. if it makes you happy, does it make you feel good seeing that bare, unadorned Christmas tree in the corner of your room? <laughs> uh, uh, well, currently mixed feelings, got to admit. I'm, I'm a bit like, I'm not quite sure what I've done. But um, I actually am really looking forward to just brightening up everything. And it is definitely that because the clocks have not long gone back have they no. and so it's just try and, and definitely because we're mid bloody weirdness in 2021 I know. still still navigating our way through a pandemic i think we need it well last we need year, it last year everyone went full-blown christmas decorations up early didn't they so maybe that's yeah. just the theme that's gonna yeah theme that's gonna continue i normally have the first of december rule i like keep it at bay right. until the first of december and then once we hit that day boom just dive in headfirst into the sparkle. Yeah. Are your kids like desperate? Are they like tugging on your hemline, going, Mum, can't we put them up yet? 
Well, no, they're not. And it's a bit sad, actually. I think maybe I've overdone this because when they do see Christmas stuff up early at um, other places before December, they're like, it's too early, isn't it, mummy? <laughs> you know, they sort of... <laughs> and they're like, yes, it is, my little shadow. <laughs> so they, they well say, trained. <laughs> they obviously like, this is what mum wants to hear. <laughs> it's too early. <laughs> Stop smiling, all of you. <laughs> well, maybe don't show them um, the upcoming pics of my house as it slowly turns into a Debenhams window. <laughs> I think fairy lights should stay up all year round, though. A fairy light should yes. not just be for Christmas. All year round, Exactly, thank you very much. yes. What it has made me think of is we need something to look forward to in January, February, because we always yeah. drop off a cliff, don't we? Yeah. We've got Christmas, we've got New Year, and then it's like, ah, the longest months of the year. We need something to look forward to. Do you know what? This reminds me. I saw a poem that somebody shared um, about winter, and it resonated with me so much. Um, bear with me one minute. So just between you're going to find it for us. I was going to say I've got it here. Bear with me. Bear with me. Bear with, doll. Bear with. Bear with is in here somewhere. Because I just saw it and I was like, that's lovely. And it might sound really wanky, me reading a bit from it, but maybe it won't. I'm prepared for you to sound wanky. Let's see. Should we Let give it a go? Let us be the judge of that. Now I, <laughs> yeah. now I saw this on someone's on a social media post and I don't know if it's something they've written if it's something a friend's written or if it's a famous poem so if anyone's listening to this and like Kate that's probably the most famous poem about winter that there is (laughs) then then forgive me my ignorance but it's called and I think it might be being written by someone called Sophie Wilson and it's called Words for Winter and it goes a little something like this Sorry. I can't I've never heard face. such a build up. I've never heard <laughs> such a build up. It better be longer than three lines. <laughs> a dramatic read of three lines of mediocrity. <laughs> okay. Draw near to nature. Draw as near as you can to it. Be cold. Feel frostbitten cheeks and sharp high air and hands swollen on returning to warmth. Reject as much as you can. You don't need it. Recognise magic and commitment, invest in it and know that sleep, deep rest and dark is essential to life. Do very little, listen, pare back, go without, take notice of those around you. The winter is prepared for you. Be alert to contrast, purple mistletoe against damp bark, cranberries close to orange zest, cheerful song in silence. Touch, it is enough. Keep looking, keep looking. And go well. <gasps> oh, Isn't that that's beautiful? So good. Yeah, that's so good. And I just love that idea of just drawing near to winter rather than and, and embracing being cold and the earth being muddy and the the the, the leaves being mulchy. I just like that idea of just being in it quietly. Oh, that, you know, I love that, Kate, and it really made me think, and I can't remember which episode we were talking about this in, but we were talking about how when the nights draw in and we're still trying to do our normal lives and we're still trying to go out and we're still trying to be active and productive and we, we're tired. Like, I get really tired and I get sleepy by about four or five. Yeah. I'm like, I can't work. My brain's not working. Because historically... In the caves, before lights were invented, we would have just been going to sleep. And that's what the animals do. And that is arguably, you know, we're still, that's what we should be doing. And and, and every year I kind of go, oh, God, this is it. I'm getting old because I've lost all my energy. But actually, when you just give in to it, exactly what you're saying in this, when you embrace it and just go, actually, I should be resting. Yeah. You know, this is time to batten down the hatches. Yeah. And to just, and to just be still. Yeah. And recoup, like we, yeah. We, I think it's we can't just carry on at our normal paces in no, winter. Not just don't fight it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I love it. And we've got to listen, listen to our bodies. Yeah, and listen to. Um, I really like that. That was that's made. That has really made winter feel more positive. Yeah, it does. That's what I felt when I read it as well. I was like, oh gosh. In fact, bring it on. That sounds wonderful. I'm ready to be in that space mm. for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Until January, February. We're like, then, make it stop! Get me some sun! <laughs> I can't go. <laughs> it's too long. <laughs> oh, it's 
to write up my podcast. All right, so this is episode 19, Celebrating Failure. Yes, and in this episode, we spoke to Rebecca Hartnell, who is a coach and a mentor and an all-round interesting person. And we wanted to talk to her, as you said, about failure, how to work with it rather than be paralysed by it or by the fear of it. And this led us into a wider chat, actually, about trusting your inner voice and generally being vulnerable. We started our chat with Rebecca by asking her, why is the thought of failing so scary? Why is it so scary? I think the the prospect of failure is really frightening because we have been brought up to succeed. Uh, We've been trained through school to succeed. We've been shamed by other people when we haven't succeeded. Um, It's all about the kind of in the masculine, the drive forward to succeed and get the win. And um, I think that we then feel ashamed, stupid, foolish, um, horrified at ourselves if we make a mistake or fail. And... I think that's a real loss. Mm. So so what's Absolutely. the alternative for us instead of feeling shame and and pain? Uh I okay, I don't think you can bypass the the pain. Mm. Uh I think that's that's a, a real bypass. I think we get bruised and I think if we try and pretend everything's fine, I think that's also dangerous. Uh I think resilience is 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 banded around as a word. It's overused. There's a, a place to Uh, gathering the gifts from these Uh, and sometimes that really hurts I only learn when it really hurts me if I'm really honest you know people can watch me doing what I'm doing and go that's going to really hurt and I'm like I know it's going to really hurt but I have to do it to learn it but the gifts in there are phenomenal that's where the gold is oh I love that that's the gifts what a great way to phrase it yeah let's can we talk about that a bit more then so so you mentioned resilience there and avoiding pain which is so true we do don't we? we 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 pull away from anything that we think is going to be painful because it's painful (laughs) Mm, mm. and we want to appear like we're dealing with it or or, well not only appear like we're dealing with it for other people because we we feel like we're being judged in some way but also yeah we don't want to sit with pain do we no pain's pain's uncomfortable um but pain is the thing that makes us change is that's what i've learned we really sometimes we get inspiring ideas and go forward with it but mostly it's when we're in a really really difficult place you know either our body or our soul is going i can't do any more of this then we will make a change and that's really important to recognize so you talked about resilience so we need to build resilience to these things or were you saying resilience actually is not all it's cracked up to be. <laughs> uh, resilience has a place. Resilience is part of the process. Uh, but I think um, it's a bit like doing a spiritual bypass. If you haven't felt the pain, then you're not going to make the necessary changes. Whereas if you just use resilience as a way to skate on the surface and pretend to everybody that it hasn't happened, especially yourself, then you're not going to get the richness out of the, the process. Whereas for me, crashing and burning and coming back more swiftly is, is a better way. Okay. So this is where. So, what did you refer to this as when you said the gifts? Did you say a bundle of gifts? Oh, well, there's an abundance of gifts. It's it, where the alchemy is. Yes. That's where it really is. It's so, the gold. Tell us more about that. Tell us more about the alchemy. Uh, maybe it's easiest if I bring examples. Uh, yeah. One of my um, one of my life processes is when I was 26, I came into recovery from addiction and um, thinking that, you know, kind of three months treatment and I'd be cracking on as normal. And it has led to uh, 22 years of um, emotional um, investigation and recovery and uh, and healing. Mm. And that healing, that ability to be with my pain, that ability to witness other people's pain means that I can sit with my client's pain. It means I've got compassion. It means I can get in there with them. It means that the, the gold is I can normalise their pain and then they can find the gifts for themselves. So that had a purpose. I didn't know that at the time, but mm. um, that was a proper crash and burn, but it's it's been so rich for me. I love the yes. way what you just said. I thought three months and I'd be fin- I'd be fixed. I love yeah. the way that we have that attitude, <laughs> don't we? We always think that. I know. I'll go and my friend my, my friend's husband, she suggested he went to therapy and he went and had one session. He's like, Yep, I've had one session. <laughs> I'm fixed. <laughs> I'm fine now. Box I've ticked. got news for you. Box ticked. Yeah. Well, there's something in us that just wants to fast track everything, isn't it? Whether that's a recovery from something or whether that's a, a process towards something. We just want to get there fast. 
Yeah, absolutely. And we've been brought up to be very um, outcome orientated. You know, you look at corporate, it's about delivery, delivery, delivery and, and really task orientated. And a school is it teaches us that, that we need to demonstrate our worth all the time. So we're in this society and these systems which demand that we keep going and we're on the treadmill. And actually, of course, we want to avoid the, the pain, too. But those two put together make a really powerful what would I say, a really powerful combination, a really powerful set of ingredients that have us powering on through and, and not reflecting and often repeating the same mistakes over and over again, which I think is the definition of insanity. Um, yes. Uh, I've been guilty of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've all been there. <laughs> and, also, and also, we're not only um, encouraged to be productive and to be successful, but also to compare ourselves to others. Like, we're always being put yeah. on league charts. We're always yeah. having our scores displayed played across like everybody knows everybody else's scores and you are a winner or you're not and that's um, yeah I think that's absolutely true mm. that's absolutely true I think it's we're very feel very visible and I think we feel very visible with out in the corporate world or out in the world of work we're also very visible on social media and what we're doing is we're comparing our insides with other people's outsides yeah yeah. We're comparing what we really feel on our own shame or our own pain with how people are presenting, and it's not a fair comparison. So, you know, people come to coaching and they're like, you know, I think I'm mad and I'm the only one experiencing this. And in the pandemic especially, I've seen different iterations of the same level of pain or shame in everybody who's shown up. Nobody's alone, but we believe that we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah that we're the only ones hurting. Yeah. We can share some of the good stuff, but we're not allowed to share the pain. And we think we're so different. And we're, we've, whatever experiences we've been through, our emotions are very similar. And, and there's a privilege in witnessing that on behalf of somebody else. I'm not judging anybody who's bringing something. So thus I realise people aren't judging me when I'm mm. bringing things. Um, whereas I might have been judged in my childhood or in, in society, in the wider society. So it brings a really strong bond. I can really see what you're saying there about that power of sharing that pain with other people. And you sort of have flashes of that in your own relationships, don't you, with your friends when you, you've all, something's difficult and you're all sharing it together. And, and on the flip side of that, we all know those people who put up the barriers and always act like their life is like a Hollywood movie. And you're sitting there in the pub chatting with them and you can't, you can't get close to them, can you? You can't... Can't mm, get in. No. Can't get in. And I can't really sustain those kind of relationships. Yeah. I'm, I'm aware I, I nudge and I prod and if nothing comes back, then I'll let them slip away these days because life's short. You know, I want the deep dive. Yeah, yeah I, and I was saying this recently to somebody that my friends or the people that I really connect with are the people with cracks. And the people yeah. who, or, yeah, and like you said, who show those cracks, like that's what I'm interested in. And that is what brings connection, isn't it? And yeah. that vulner you need vulnerability to, to breed connection, don't you? To, to get closer yes, to people. And, and humans need to be connected. Uh, you know, we yeah. all think that we're all right on our own, but actually, you know, lockdown, we've shown how much we need people. It's shown us mm. how much we need people and that we yeah. need to be in community and we need those bonds. You know, we maybe only got three or five really good friends that we can do that with in life, but they're essential. They're the people you can pick up the phone to when you haven't spoken to them for 18 months, you know, and yeah. that bond's there. Um, uh, and I think, you know, it's not about having a massive array or a clan of 22 people who've all seen you go through the deep dive it's about having those people that you can turn to when it's when it's tricky and be really yeah. honest yeah success is the ability to go from failure to failure without losing your enthusiasm as from a chap called winston churchill nice one winston churchill So talking about failure, going back to the alchemy and the gold mm -hmm. that we experience, um, one of the things that I personally have um, learnt over time, and it's something that helps me deal with failure or when things don't go as planned, is that you learn something from every experience. Mm. And Absolutely. so even when things don't go my way, I think, OK, what am I learning from this? Or I always think mm. this needed to happen this way. Like, what am I getting? Mm. What's the thing I'm getting from this? Like, so is like, is there a, a way? So that's what helps me. But is, is there a way that people can turn their failure around or find the gifts in it? 
so looking for a shortcut. Um, well, I don't know. Is that what I'm doing? No, I'm or... just. I'm just <laughs> no, I think. I think. That, I think there is a process. Um, you know, there was some meme that was flying around, which is, you know, not to ask why is this happening to me, but you know, what what's it here to teach me? And I really like that because. But it's a process. So first of all, you, we are going to respond to why is this is happening to me? That's natural. We're going to go into victim, whatever you want to call it. You know, it's like, oh, why now? Why today? Why me? Um, but then I think it is. Um, about probably talking to somebody it is it is about talking to somebody or journaling or connection to spirit or you know actually honoring it making the space to honor it and and be heard in in whatever way works for you um you know for the real introverts writing it out can really really help um so they can see it but certainly that that bonding with another human being i don't think there's anything quite like it when somebody goes oh I did exactly the same or I know somebody who did that and came back from it and through those things through hearing ourselves either writing or talking we can begin to shift it from why me to to what's in this and uh, and bring it forward and find the gifts because they are there's also I think um uh a trick to to reflecting um purposefully because the brain has a negative bias and it'll take me down this spiral spiral of negativity of uh, why me it's all gone horribly wrong there's nothing in this i'm never trying it again you know and i can it's 3 a.m in the morning i'm I'm not a great person to be around whereas if you can re- reflect really constructively and there's a series of questions that i can share that you can ask then you've got a focus for it uh yeah, and you can maybe interrupt that spiral. That's a really interesting point because we've all been there, haven't we? That spiral and your thoughts, you just you just can't stop them. You can't rein it in. I would love to hear the mm. the questions that you... Yes, yeah. what are these tips and tricks? <laughs> they are. They're, they're really, really simple. But, you know, in a situation where, where it feels like the shit has hit the fan again, um, you know, to just grab a pen and paper and, and, you know, probably a blanket, actually. There's something about really taking care of yourself in this because you're hurt at this point. You know, it's not gone as you planned. So the questions are as simple as, you know, what did I do well? What didn't work? And what would I do differently next time? And right into those. So it just gives a little bit of a structure instead of that whole spiral down into I'm a terrible person, which is where I get to. And so to really pull mm. pull those up, you know, what, 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 what did I learn? What would I do differently next yeah. time? And I feel so much more comes out when you're writing. Yeah. For me, like, I, I don't know if you know Byron Katie and she's got, she does the works and she's got the four questions and I can have an idea in my head of where I think it's going to go. But it, when I start the, when I start writing and I might take an hour answering these questions, it always takes me, I always come out with new stuff that I had I no it. idea was I in there. It. I love that. Absolutely love it. Yeah. Yeah. Our, our subconscious is mm. full of stuff that we just need to give it the chance to surface. And uh, yeah. you know, I'm 100,000 words into my book. It's just being shaped at the moment. But I would show up with a subject in mind, but what came out was never what I'd intended. Mm. That's exactly... It's never... Uh. It's, it would surface all the things beneath that needed to come out that were much richer than my plan. Um, mm. Yeah, so writing's a phenomenal way for accessing. Just free writing, you know, having a title and not even... Not even dictating where it's going to go uh, and allowing it to surface is amazing. Yes, yeah, because it's all in there, isn't isn't it? We're coming yeah. back to um, well, we were speaking about this before the um, before we before our chat that on your website you've got a quote from Socrates. Um, if we were real pro- professionals, we would then have it in front of us. <laughs> See hey, I've, I've got, got it. it. I've, I've oh, got go it. Go on, go on, Kate. What's the quote? So the quote is. Um, Socrates claimed to have... Now, is it demon or daemon? You can say either way, but demon okay. is probably commoner, yeah. Socrates claimed to have a demon, literally a, dis- a divine something, that frequently warned him in the form of a voice against mistakes, but never told him what to do. And then you go on to say, Rebecca, as a coach and a human, I believe that we have our own inner guidance if only we could learn to listen to it. And mm. that your job is to help you hear your own voice and enable you to trust it and empower you to identify what to do next. But yes, hearing that voice and then trusting it is the sort of the it's, next step. I think it's I think it's really powerful um, because uh, we've been taught to be externally referenced. We've been taught to listen to authority. We were taught to listen to our parents, our teachers, our bosses. You know, it's almost easier to rebel against our bosses than actually ask us 
ourselves what we want because that can feel like mm. a dangerous place um so i think we do know i do i slightly disagree with socrates now it's interesting having that read back because i actually think that we do get warned, warned against danger but i also think that that's where true inspiration comes i think it's an incredible moment if we can just listen to ourselves i've been working with um the divine feminine and I've been working with the cycle of Gestalt and the cycle of Gestalt has a thing called the fertile void and I've been trying to work out what's in the fertile void and just going down through the layers has shown me how much wisdom that we have access to because we've got the decades we've already lived and all the experiences we've had we've got this kind of animal body that we live in that's pre-wired for wisdom uh, we've got our connection to the spirit allies or some kind of spiritual belief I think a lot of people have got that um, below that I think we've got connection to the earth mother earth and she's really wise best we listen to her mm. because we're about to destroy her um, yeah. and beneath that we've got access to the cosmos and all this kind of amazing wisdom but we don't listen we google it and uh, yeah. if we're googling a fact that's fine but if we need to know about ourselves we've got all our ancestors behind us they've got masses mm. of wisdom you know let's access them so i'm going spiritual now but that's who I am and how I am. We love a bit of spiritual. Yeah. And actually listening yeah. to you talk us through those kind of those different layers that we all have within us, that felt, I don't know, I found that felt, made me feel really warm and mm. glowing inside, actually, just to sort of actively think about that. It feels like we've got access to masses, masses of information and resources that we, we ignore. Um, and yeah. that's mad. And it's about tuning in, isn't it? And, it? and it's about tuning into whatever feels comfortable for you so some people might call it god some people might call it the universe some people might call it your ancestors mm. i often tune into my higher self mm. or and i often I, I use the language that i feel that the universe is giving me a lesson or look at, look how the universe is showing me this and mm. and i think there's something comforting in thinking that there is something outside of us mm. that is that is guiding us but mm. also i guess essentially if somebody was to really drill down and force me to give them an answer i would say it's it's me it's it's mm -hmm. my it's when i strip everything away everything i'm worried about or the people pleasing or yeah worried about being judged it's just at my mm. core mm. i guess it's your it's you you have the answers don't you you have a very clear voice that knows mm. what's best for you and sometimes um, it's a shock. I watch people go through the coaching process and they're like, wow, I never knew that about myself. Often people are like, oh, I did know that. But I was yes. told when I was 15 or I was told when I was 22 that it wasn't viable. But actually, I've always known that about myself. I just wasn't letting myself hear it. And that's a really profound moment because it's really congruent then. Yes, mm. yes. And having the the courage to follow that that voice because that you know you sort of mentioned I think we've all mentioned a few times kind of doing things that we know are going to upset other people that we care about that can be quite mm. difficult to do to sort of break down that fear of what other people will mm. think about your mm. actions which mm. you've kind of got to do you know sort of talking about these people who kind of knew deep down what they needed to do or who they were but it can take decades to get to a point where you feel able to hear that or feel strong enough to do it or to trust it to trust yeah, it getting old is wonderful getting old is wonderful because you begin to go i remember a moment when i was 32 and i went oh my god you know what are they thinking of me and then i went oh my god they're not thinking of me at all it was like an yes. existential crisis <laughs> do you know what i mean and then about five minutes later i was like oh my god i'm free i can do whatever i want nobody's thinking mm. about me and that was yeah. just a revelation but the reality is we do have to navigate um you know our relationships and, and our current lives you know and, and using techniques like nonviolent communication they're very simple but it means that we can you know honor ourselves in there but communicate it to somebody uh, in a way that's kind because uh, we we don't need the backlash yes mm. i've said that to so many people so friends are worrying about things i've often said to them look nobody nobody's paying the attention to you that they think you are like not in a mean way no, like obviously we and your friends cares. love you but like the yeah. bigger picture nobody's <laughs> like nobody cares just nobody do cares. it it's fine everybody's too self-obsessed you know with themselves yeah. they're, 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 nobody cares yeah. about you and that's a gorgeous moment you know yeah. um so yeah i think you know i don't know how many times we get reincarnated i don't know if we get reincarnated at all but this life is short so we actually have to be true to ourselves um, yeah. uh, and and do that with kindness for those around us sometimes i lie awake and i think about my fridge making all its noises downstairs how does it make things cold how 
does it stop my food from getting old? How does it work? How does it work? You know, thinking about this, it makes me realise that that's where indecision comes from, isn't it? Because you're not being true to yourself and you're not actually tuning into what you really want. You're thinking, oh, Mm. but I should do that because that person wants me to do it. And Mm. actually, if I do this, this might be good for my career. And so you're not authentically looking at what do I really want. Yeah, what does, what's the heart really saying? Difficult. Yeah, what's your body yeah. saying? We, this, these brains we've got, they're, they're, they're either an asset or a curse. They are absolutely too big and we can play, you know, ping pong. It's exhausting. And actually, if we just drop down into our bodies, we drop down into our hearts, you know, we take ourselves away from our usual environments where all the agendas and pulls are, then we can actually hear ourselves and, um, and, and make a decision from that lower, deeper place, a true place in ourselves. Yes, I like that. And I was going to ask, you know, are there any kind of daily practices or, <clears throat> excuse me, regular practices that we can bring into our lives to try and make these, these things more intuitive? But I think maybe you've already answered that question by giving yourself that time to really think about what you're actually hearing deep down. I think... Yeah, I think time is uh, time, and how we use it is really important. I think we've just got on this treadmill, and we can't, we can't, we don't reference ourselves. We don't ask ourselves if we ask ourselves the question and sit for a little while. Um, I'm not a great fan of meditation. Uh, I'm not a good sitting person. Okay. I can do walking meditation, so it might be we need to walk into it. It depends on your learning style. Mm. Um, right into it. I'm a you know I shamanically drum in my tree just to annoy my neighbours, but also to access my guidance <laughs> and um, uh, that. <laughs> That's another way of me hearing the things that I need to hear, which I could think my way out of otherwise. And some people get it when they're out on their daily jog. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Running, school run, on foot, whatever. You know, those times when we're in those liminal spaces, when we're not actually hooked into an activity or an agenda or work or kids, then um, then we do. That's Those are those spaces where we can actually hear hear those wisdoms. Yes. And yeah, rec- find what works for you and then carve out space to do that for yourself. Mm. Now, let's talk about overthinking things because thinking too much, that can be paralysing too, can't it? Mm. Yeah, because all we are wired to see brain uh, danger. Uh, we're still yeah. wired to see the, the the woolly mammoth. So then we go out evidencing all the danger and why we shouldn't do something, and then we never do it. And then we mm. get very depleted because we put lots of energy into designing something, having an idea, being inspired, evidencing why it's a really a bad idea, and then getting no rewards from it because we never did it. Okay, and that's exhausting. Yeah, design fault, total design fault. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that makes mm. sense. And actually, because that's what we're doing, isn't it? When we we want to do something, but we talk ourselves out of it, that, yeah. that fear that it's all going to go tits up. Yeah, mm. Mm. Beautifully, beautifully yes. evidence that it's going to go tits up. Um, I think, um, yes. <laughs> but, you know, Julia Cameron, she says just, you know, who, who wrote the book, feel the fear and do it anyway. And I sort of get that. You mm. actually do have to feel it. But but scaffold, you know, who do you need around you in order to do this thing? Who's got your back? What do you need? You know, what, what in reality is in the way? There will be obstacles and what do you need in order to get, get over those? You can use your brain really well, but only if, only if we sort of rein it in, really, only if we use it, otherwise it uses us. Yes. So is there a way to avoid the shame and regret attached to failure? Or are you saying that there's no shortcut? and that we've got to live it, feel it, process it in whichever which way we can and know that there are gifts within it I and that none I'm... of it is wasted. None of it's wasted. Uh, You know, I think we get more resilient through practice, not by bypassing the process. So we get more resilient by going, Mm. okay, that hurt, and and practicing finding what's good in it. Uh, Because there always, always is. The worst, worst things I've been through in my life, which I will not bore you with now, but they have been the alchemy. They have just been transformational. And it takes a while to come back from. But we get better at it. We get much better at it. My dark nights of the soul now are a night, not 18 months. Put it that way. Yeah, great. And and through practice, I think that's a good one because it's um, yeah we can fool ourselves that we're by kind of shoring ourselves up, you know, putting up big barriers that that is that's protecting ourselves. Yeah. But actually, that's not the case. Yeah. Well, it, it has a place, mm. and I think if we do it repeatedly, our worlds get very small. You know, we we stop yeah. learning, we stop being nourished, we stop making those connections, and actually just to keep nudging and pushing through those things and making it wider and wider leads to such a rich life, uh, and it's scary, you know, but worth it. I like to live in a predictable way 
I have the same old sandwich every day The same routine, the same ideas The same tomatoes and the same cheddar cheese Oh, I'm willing to try something new With a nickel, pick a pickle and some chutney too I'll give it a try, yes, I'll give it a go I might just like it, well, you just never know But I'll always love a cup of tea We like to try these things out ourselves. So we asked Rebecca to set us a challenge to help us process failure and to find the gold within it. Okay, so you asked me for a challenge. You asked for this. I challenge you two to change your brain chemistry daily. Yes, every day. I'd like each of you to find five things that you're grateful for in that day you've just had and five things that you can congratulate yourself on for doing well in that day too. And I'd like you to do this exercise even, in fact, especially when you've had a difficult day. It'll be tougher, and these will be the days where the biggest gifts lie. You can do it alone, you can do it with your partner. When you get into bed, you can write it down or just do it in your brain. However, just do it. Make sure you do it. Do this for a week, and if possible, do it continuously for three weeks. When you begin, score yourself out of 10 on self-confidence at the end of this process. Just have a little review and see if this has shifted. These are the foundations on which resilience is built. This is the stuff that means we're able to come back from failure faster and thus we can alchemise the wounds to find these gifts. It's radical because it challenges all that programming that we've been given that we shouldn't speak well of ourselves, all that programming we've been gifted that we've internalised. Good luck. I look forward to seeing how you get on. Thank you to Rebecca for taking the time to talk with us. And if you want to find out more about the work that Rebecca does or any more about her personally, you can go to demoncareercoach.co.uk. And that's spelled D-A-E-M-O-N careercoach.co.uk. So, Kate! (laughs) So, Kate, were you a good girl? Did you do the challenge over five days? And if so, how are you feeling? I was a diligent student oh to the God, point where I, I knew, knew I'd forget to do this. So I put a little note, like a little memory note, memory note. I put a little reminder in my phone just to go off at nine o'clock every night. Oh. Sometimes I wrote it down. Sometimes I just thought about it in my own mind. But yeah, I did do it and I really enjoyed doing it. I found the, so the five things that I was grateful for, I found that relatively easy the five successes of the day I found quite a lot harder yeah and actually I lowered I lowered the bar on what I counted as a success quite quickly (laughs) you know having milk in the fridge that wasn't gone off so I could make a cup of tea that was a success these are all these are all big ticks these are big ticks right and that's what I found I found through doing this that I began to be thinking about it as the day went on and I began to be thinking about god look at the light shining through the leaves on that tree and giving it a real kind of golden glow oh that's something to put my gratitudes later and it kind of I think that consciously thinking about it during the day is all part of it isn't it part of the the changing your mindset so you're noticing more things that you may not have noticed Yeah, so I would start off, okay, I didn't explain that very well. So I would start off at the night trying to think about my five things that are on my gratitudes and success lists and trying to sort of mentally go through my day. What did I do? What did I see? What felt good? Okay, there was that, there was that. And then as the days went on and I began to get into the rhythm of doing it, I I began to be thinking about it at the moment of it happening rather than Mm. retrospectively sifting through the day's activities Ah. and thinking... Was that something I felt grateful for? I was actively thinking about it in the moment when I saw the thing or did the thing or felt the thing that I felt grateful for, thinking, there we go, that will go on my list of gratitudes for later in the day. Yes, and but do you also think that you maybe 
felt it as well before yes. you thought that? Did you also feel it oh, as something to be grateful for? That is exactly it. Mm. That's exactly it. I felt it. I felt grateful in the moment rather than retrospectively looking back and thinking, oh, yeah, actually, you know what? Yeah, I'm grateful mm. that that happened. In the moment of it happening, I thought, yes, that is something I'm really grateful for. And I will... And I wouldn't have been consciously, at a subconscious level, I might have been aware of it, but I wouldn't have been consciously feeling grateful for it in the moment if I hadn't had my attention drawn to it through doing this exercise of writing these lists of gratitudes and successes. Yeah, great. So you can see how, um, you can see how it starts to change the way you're thinking and feeling. Exactly. Starts to change the way you're thinking and feeling, starts to change your approach. The things that you're focusing on, actually, I personally found I was focusing on smaller, more minute things around me, being more aware of the sun through the trees or more aware of, well, you know what? That's great that I've just found a uh, frozen leftover curry in the freezer and that's going to be my lunch. Brilliant. I'm so yeah. grateful. What a success. Yeah. You know, it kind of changes yeah. the headspace. Yeah. yeah. And I think especially when you're celebrating those little things, because it is all that it it is you need. It's important to notice all those little things. It is because that's actually the reality of life, isn't it? Mm. We do have these these big, exciting things, but that's not the every day, is it? That's not the the stuff that feeds you on a daily basis. The stuff that feeds you on a daily basis is the small little. Yeah. Delights. Yeah. The confidence part of the challenge, like how confident are you feeling? Oh, yes. So did you make a note at the start and the end or is it not long enough for you to? I think it's not long enough for that. Yeah, I did start thinking about that and I didn't feel like that changed much. So I think I'm going to keep. Well, I am going to keep on doing it. Definitely going to keep on doing it. Mm. And I think I'll keep an eye on that kind of how confident am I feeling and see if that changes. I think that maybe needs a bit of a longer investment. Yeah. Yeah. What about yourself, Gwen? Did you give it a go? I did. Yes, I did. And um, unlike you, I wasn't as diligent a student. Um, I think this is because recently you've done a (laughs) master's. So you have... I just... (laughs) so disciplined <laughs> you feel- if i knew where rebecca lived i would be putting an apple on her desk right about now uh, she'd be rather freaked out um i so i did it i did it a couple of nights and i then also did my gratitudes in a couple of mornings because gratitude nice. practice is something that um we've spoken about before because it's something that i've brought into my life um yes it's something I used to do really religiously, like on a daily basis. And I actually got it from, I just want to quickly mention the, you know, Rhonda Byrne who wrote The Secret. I've yes. no doubt mentioned her before. She also wrote this book called The Magic. And The Magic is yeah. all about changing the way your brain works through doing gratitude practices every day for 28 days. Yeah. So the idea is that yeah. by the end of the 28 days, basically your neural pathways are firing on different angles or whatever science and um but you do start (laughs) you do it does adjust your you do start to feel and act and think differently so um and one of the main one the first the very first exercise in the book is that you write down 10 things that you're grateful for every single day so that is something that I did do and that I continued for quite a while afterwards and yes it totally changes it totally, it, like she was saying, like when you're pro, what this will do, this exercise will do is make you move through to finding the good in failure and to finding the um, the gold in failure quicker. So where she yeah. was saying it used to take her 18 months and now it can take her 24 hours, whatever. And I think that is what the gratitudes has done for me, that if yes. something goes wrong, like I've missed a train or... Um, I haven't managed to meet up with somebody or something, if whatever, I find my brain immediately going, huh, now this has happened for a reason or there will and 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 I'll I'll immediately be able to or very quickly be able to see the plus sides in me in not yeah. achieving that and going, yes. ah, well, me not getting that train meant that I've had 15 minutes to sit here and actually prepare um for meeting up with the person I'm meeting up with or um, and previously if I've you know big things as well like missing out on a house I was trying to um, get a contract for or missing out on a job it makes your brain immediately go okay you can't see it now 
but there will be something that you're grateful for in this situation yeah for not for this not going well and that's what the gratitude practice does for me and it and yes like she said the more you do it the quicker you get to that point and the quicker you find the gold in it and um and like you said, and like you said, when I was writing my successes as well of your day. Yeah. So you're like, huh, OK, what have I what have I done well today? And um, yeah, like you, I quickly got to the point where I was like, do you know what? I had put a load of washing on before nine o'clock in the morning. And winning. Yes, I had made <laughs> enough dinner that I had lunch the next day. Or I, you know, it can be small things, but there's something about doing that yeah. as well at the end of your day writing down the things you've achieved because you can go to bed especially when we're multitasking we've got so many balls in the air we can go to bed thinking we've not achieved anything and when you actually write down the things that you have achieved you go oh do you know what (laughs) I've done all right yeah I've done all right Mm -hmm. and our brains are very quick well previous maybe to doing this sort of exercise our brains are very quick to focusing on the the thing you didn't do or the thing that didn't go as yes and you you said so then the, the phrase everything happens for a reason and I've always been I've always felt a bit cynical about that like well, yeah. I don't believe everything happens for a reason random acts do happen yeah and sometimes things happen that are sad or bad or unwelcomed yeah but actually the whole point behind that phrase isn't it is not that actually it's a premeditated reason behind it it's that you as an individual are choosing to see where these positive elements can be found and to focus on that and the yeah. positive that can be had in a situation yeah, rather than the alternative. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And I actually, as I said that phrase, I thought, oh, I don't know if I, <laughs> I don't know if I, it's such a cliched <laughs> phrase. I don't know if I really mean that, but it, it is about, it is your response to the situation. And rather than being yes. that person that throws their hand up in the air and go, oh, why does all this bad shit always happen to me? Or, you know, yeah. life is against me. That if you're, if you're actually retraining your brain to immediately see, okay, what am I going to learn from this situation? Or what can I be grateful yeah. for in this situation? Then then yes you're quicker you're very much quicker going to deal with that situation yeah I mean also keeping in mind that um what we've been doing in this challenge is building resilience and um and that also what she gave us during the interview was a list of questions for when you are actually experiencing failure like if something has gone wrong and you're in the moment and you need to kind of um do some work on it so those what were those questions again um here they are what did i do well what didn't work and what would i do differently next time so yeah sitting down and writing about those will be um will be really really helpful when you're in failure crisis point yeah but also let's not forget that people fail at things all the time and you might look at someone who's a real success or who's really good at something and what you don't see is the multiple times that they've failed as part of their journey to get to yeah. where they are now. It's easy to think that they just woke up one day and were just this big success. And this is where the resilience comes in, isn't it? Because people fail at things all the time and it's OK. Yeah, absolutely. Very good point. It's all right to fail. Um, hey, speaking of the questions, we'll pop them all up on our Patreon for free and um, we will include the link in our show notes. So, okay, so yes, will you keep doing it? I genuinely think (laughs) that I will keep doing this because it feels great. And some nights when I haven't quite got the the energy to you know get my notepad out and sit and write it i'll just falling i'll just fall asleep thinking about it i'll Mm. fall asleep thinking about what am i grateful for today and that's such a lovely way to drift off with those thoughts firing around your brain gently trickling out your ear holes yeah do you know i've got a friend who says she does it with her daughter every night that they that she just says what thing are you really grateful for or what's the good what great thing happened today and yeah. so it really, what a positive end to your day that you're really focusing on the good that happened. And what a great thing yeah. to do with your kids. I mean, if everybody could yeah. start, if everybody could yeah. grow up doing that, then. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we'll all be better people. I think the first night I did it, I was in bed and I was like, right, Chris, this is what I'm doing. What are the five things that you're grateful for today? And he was reading his book. He was like, oh, God. 
Oh, God, don't make me join in. Oh, God, I'm trying to read my book. For God's sake. <laughs> come on, Chris. I was like, come on. He did then get on board with it, but I had to take a little cajoling to make him engage with what was going on. It's just, it's just so comedy moment. Oh, oh fuck God. <laughs> Tell you what I'm not grateful for. You asking me what I'm grateful for. <laughs> you and this bloody podcast getting in the way of my God's peace. sake. Yeah, stop trying to make me feel good all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, Gwen, do you think you'll carry on doing this? Um, yes, definitely. It's it. Like I said, it's it's um, it's a practice that I used to do, and I know I've spoken about it loads on the podcast. But it's just one that I really like doing it more. Re- Doing it more frequently over the last few days, thanks to the challenge, has really reminded me of how good it makes me feel. And um, so I, yeah, I definitely want to get back into the habit of not only doing my gratitudes in the morning, but yes, also doing this practice last thing at night and just finding the good in your day. And and I think, yeah, that is the key to um, finding the gold. The alchemy. The The alchemy. (laughs) Thank you for listening to Write Up My Podcast. We always love to hear from you, so please email us at writeupmypodcast at gmail.com and you can find us on Instagram and Twitter at writeupmy. Don't forget to like and subscribe wherever you listen to us. And if you feel particularly generous, then please head over to Apple and leave us a rate and review. Thank you. And why not head over to our Patreon page at www.patreon.com slash write up my podcast. We can find all sorts of extra content. And thank you to the wonderful team that support us on every episode of Write Up My Podcast. That is Andrew Grimes with his absolutely unique music. And to Erica Francis. George for doing our artwork. Thank you very, very much. And we'll be back in a couple of weeks with our next episode, which we are very excited about. We're talking to Emma Bardwell, who is an expert in women's health and nutrition, and we're going to be talking with her all about perimenopause. But in the meantime, keep trying things to make you feel good. Hurrah! Tell me, did you like the podcast, Brian? No! Oh. If, unlike Brian, you thought our podcast was really great, then don't hold back, like, subscribe, and tell your mate. But if, like Brian, you thought our podcast wasn't fun, then just keep quiet, don't feel the need to tell anyone. We'd love to hear from you if you've got some thoughts to share, such rich and lovely views that all should be aware of. But I hope you liked our podcast and you thought it was really great. And if you did, like, subscribe and tell your mate. Because we don't need grumpy pants bringing everybody down. No, we don't need negative Nellies making people frown. No. So I hope you liked our podcast and you thought it was really great and if you did like subscribe and tell your mate